And the other software thing I've been playing with, just been doing that this week actually, and it's uh, you know still a work in progress in some some sense. Um, if you look up here on my panel, I'll do a close up on this in a minute. There's a button that's labelled Sync All Controls. I had this vague idea when I was designing this that for each board on the board, as, as soon as you flipped a switch, one of the switches that was connected to that board, all the functions in the cockpit that were slaved to other switches on that board would synchronize some. Now, obviously, looking back on it, that doesn't make sense. I think I got the idea because that's kind of what happens with the SciTech radio and switch panels, I think. Or, or maybe it's something to do with the real air scouts, the way that works. There, there's something in my mind that, that I thought that was going to be for free, but no, it didn't work. So, so what happens is, quite often, you know, you kind of sloppily shut down the aircraft well, in fact, stop the flight without shutting down the aircraft. Um, so you come back to reload it, and you can either reload it cold and dark or ready to fly. A lot of the switches are out of sync. In fact, we'll just demonstrate, rather than me talk about this, um, let's just demonstrate that, and then we'll see what I've done to fix it. So we're just going to look at some of that. Here we are, sitting in the Twin Otter. We're on the fuel pumps at Orcas Island. We're ready to fly. We've loaded the ready-to-fly configuration, but what usually happens is, you know, if we're not conscientious about shutting down the aircraft correctly, we just stop the flight and shut down the computer. When we start up, depending on which state we start up in, some of the switches are out of sync with the functions in the aircraft. I mean, obviously this is worse if you want to start up cold and dark and you haven't shut it down to cold and dark properly. In fact, we're going to simulate that. So, if I bring up the configuration page and I set it to the cold and dark configuration, so we'll wait a couple of seconds for that to sort itself out. So, so in the aircraft, of course, we've got the control locks on, everything's off. Uh, and if we look at, for example, the master switch is off, external battery is off. And so, and so on. But if we look at the panel we're going to see that the switches are set incorrectly. So for example my control lock switch currently says free. The parking brake switch is actually off and yet the parking brake is uh, set in the virtual cockpit. What else? My oh, generators are switched on, my DC master is on, my external battery switch is set to battery, what else? Got anti-collision lights on, bleed air is on, and lots of other things as well, which we needn't go into. And that's not realistic. So, so what I've done is I've written a piece of software to sort that out, and I'm just going to demonstrate that. Um, we've loaded cold and dark, so we know that all the switches are set to off in the cockpit. What I'm going to do is, and you just have to trust me that uh, the switches are set in my cockpit, as I, as I say they are. So let's demonstrate that. I've hooked up the function that I've written to do this to the autopilot test button, which is a button that's easy to hand. So when I press that, it's going to run the, the function. And we'll just set up a few other things artificially to make it obvious that that's had the desired effect. So what I'm going to do is let's put on the windscreen wipers, we we'll switch those to, to on. Uh, we're going to switch on the cabin flight compartment lights. What else? We'll put on. We'll, what we'll do is we'll turn one of the we'll turn the left generator off and leave the right one on. So we should have an indicator light for the left generator. What I'll do is as well on the start panel. I'll put the ignition to manual, and we'll put the left. Or in fact, the right. Why not? The right engine igniter. We'll put that switch to the use the number one igniter only. Again, because that's just we can easily check that. That'll do really. Um, what else? I'll put the left wing tank boost pump on as well because again we can easily spot that. Uh, so that's all we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that function by pressing the test button and it takes a little while to execute. We've got a legend up here that says it's scanning the joysticks in turn. Now it's doing all the off settings. And now all the on settings. Okay, so what's it done? Well, it's turned on the windscreen wipers. 
the cabin lights are on. I don't know if they went off and then came on again. We've got a left generator warning light, which, which is what we should have. The control locks are off. The parking brake is off. I can tell that if I reset it, you should see it move. Yeah. What else? Did I, I'm going to turn those windscreen wipers off. There. They're getting away. Um, oh, the generator, I said that. The wing tanks, uh, boost pumps, they're hard to see, they're behind the yoke. You, you should see the right wing tank is off, the left wing tank switch is up. So that was, and I'll just turn it down, off again. There it goes. What else did we do? Parking brake. Uh, oh, the ignition switches, the ignition set to manual, you can see the switch guard is up there, if I put it down it goes back, the, oh, if I just put that up again out of the way, you can see the igniter switch is in the up position, number one position for the right hand engine and it's in the down position for the left hand engine, again if I reset that, yeah. So basically we can run that function whenever we want if we map it to a button, and the button I'll map it to is the one I originally designed for that purpose. And that means we have to start to worry about shutting the aircraft down correctly. And that just makes things more realistic because we can never be out of sync between the virtual cockpit and the hardware switches. Now it's not perfect. You probably noticed somewhere in there that although it's cold and dark, my Reality XP GPS was on. And then when I syn synchronized the switches that actually went off. Now the, again another rough edge with the Reality XP there is no power on and power off command. There's a power on off toggle command and um, so that we, we can't synchronize that. Anything that works on a toggle can't you know we can't synchronize it because we can't possibly know what the state of it is by looking at the state of the switch. And the other thing to note of course is that um, synchronizing the switches doesn't synchronize the state of the aircraft it doesn't, for example, from cold and dark, although we've got all the switches set as they were when the engines were running, it doesn't start the engines for us. Um, all it does is resets the switches in the virtual cockpit, so but that's to be expected. So that's a great feature and it works works fantastic. It's, it's all done in Lua um, and it's, I was going to say it's easy to do, it's, it's not easy to do actually. It uses the Lua COM library which allows you to interrogate HID HID devices, those are joysticks, human interface devices, and do things like check the positions of the switches. And then once you've checked the positions of the switches, I mean basically that's all I do, I go through methodically for every joystick that it detects connected to the system, it, it looks at every button and notes the state, and if it finds a switch that's set to on, all it does is it calls the function that we've mapped to that switch in our Linda setup and for buttons that are, that are off again it calls the function if there's a function mapped to the off operation for that switch it calls that function. What it doesn't do yet, I'm working on this, is the axes and this is kind of similar to what happens with the, uh, you know I've talked at great length in the past about why having an analog elevator trim control doesn't work very well with the autopilot. Same sort of thing. Whenever you load a situation into FSX that situation includes particular settings for the power, reverse, props, fuel levers, to name a few, and they may not match what you have set up on the hardware. Now again the problem with that is as soon as you touch the levers the, the setting in FSX will jump to wherever that lever actually is positioned. So the problem is I haven't quite figured out how to make FSX reflect those values. Um, well, I won't go into the details of why that, that is, but um, we'll, we'll get there. 